ladies and gentlemen, we are jumping into the fourth game and what could potentially be the final game of the grand final in the Golden League of the first round. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number four. Spawning in on the west side of the map, in the color blue, playing as the English, we have got Vortex. And on the right side, it is Marine Lord playing as the Rus in red. We've talked about this a lot. It is going to be the question of how Vortex is really going to use that English. And the first thing that I saw for him was that he aggroed three wolves. That's a great start. And look at Marine Lord's scout. Okay, on the left side, his scout was not really able to find anything. But look at the right side. I think that's three wolves trailing him, right? Three or four? Yeah, it looks like it's. it could be a two-legged uh, a two -legged wolf. A two-bodied <laughs> wolf. Uh, misses another one. Uh, but yeah, there's so many wolves on this map running around uh, that uh, it can be very difficult to catch all of them as we saw Marine Lord actually missing one there. But uh, I'm curious to Gotta see what kind of bounty all. you get. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you think... What's the five-minute bounty score going to be for Marine Lord here? 340. You've, you've made a, a terrible mistake. Uh, did I? Yeah. Well, I obviously, it depends on the boar. Let's not forget the boar. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. You've forgotten the boar, my friend. Marine Lord is a boar enthusiast. Uh, as you guys will be familiar, Marine Lord, he has runs from a long lineage of boars, and uh, he is not afraid at all to get the boar out when it comes to these maps. But one thing to note, boar not going to be in the middle of the map, going to be on the edges of the map instead. Indeed. I know someone that has a Smurf account that's called Boar Enjoyer. Don't you know who it is? I've got no idea who that could be. <laughs> I, I know who Boar Enthusiast is, though. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Of course it's you. Already at 230 bounty, and it's killing the deer. Do we have two scouts for Vortex? Yes, we do. But it looks like he wasn't really focusing on taking on the deer spots because most of those deer fall into the hands of Marine Lord. And, yeah, it's like it's going to be 340 even without that Boar Technically speaking, if he finds one or two more wolves, there's a legitimate chance that he could get to 500 with the boar. That would be brutal. Yeah, that could be absolutely terrible. And now we can see Marine Lord making his way through that stealth forest up towards the north. He's not going to actually run into that deer, uh, that deer camp, that deer... What would you even call this? Patch? This group of deer? Yeah, a deer patch. Yeah, that's a yeah, deer patch. I like that. That's good. That's good, Lydicor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you, Lydicor. No. I like you. I was just thinking about, you know, deer patch, and I quickly associated that with just patch in general. So it's like devs, you know, it's time for some yeah, patches. Yes. Not deer patches, is... actual game patches. <laughs> oh, no, this is the deer patch that comes. Actually, we do get some serious deer changes in the next patch, but Council Hall going to be coming down for Vortex. No chance of Abbey of Kings uh, shenanigans happening here. Golden Gate going to be going down for Marine Lord. Very far away from his town center as well. What's the deal with this? He's leaving like three tiles of space there, potentially even four tiles of space. Not something that we see, typically see. A big space here. So he got some ideas, maybe a, a farm or two going to be thrown in there. But Wheelbarrow now coming through for Marine Lord and uh, he's going to be looking to age up. Do we see a potential boar coming out from him? I would suspect so. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because the thing is, as you pointed out before this game, how would the English play this? Possibly with longbows and towers aggression. And... Sort of having that proxy forward, having the boar and then just producing archers is something that's going to force the English to defend because they can't just leave their base and let you march in with the archers. So I think that Marine Lord's best bet might be to go for the boars over here, especially because you have to consider the English have limited mobility. Like those longbows are either pushing your boar or they're pushing your base, but not the two at the same time. So yeah. against a slow moving civilization like the English, spreading out your economy is a reasonable thing to do. Now. Not so fast, because I really wonder if Vortex is going to drop a stable here. We have seen Mist deploying with uh, English horsemen before. I wonder if he, that is what he's thinking about for this. Because if it's only longbows, that's a little disappointing against Rus. Yeah, that could be an option. One of the dangers of going longbows against Rus is that you really need to consider the fact that the Rus archer ball is very, very big. It is bigger than any other civilization's archibald. And as a result, it means if you ever, if you ever get out of position with your longbows and you overcommit to a fight, 
you will lose your entire mass. In the blink of an eye, it will be gone because the Rus longbow mass is so much bigger uh, than, or the Rus uh, archer mass is so much bigger than the English longbow mass uh, that it just means you've always got to be just perfect, pixel perfect with your positioning. And if you are not, if you make a single mistake, it's all gone, it vanishes. And we're actually going to be seeing a professional scouts coming in here from Marine Law. Take a look at this one, Lidacore. Very old school from both sides here. You see professional scouts at the Rus. This is a build order that was very popular back in days where the Rus horse archers were super, super popular. And it looks like on the other side, we do have a barracks out here, but we are not seeing anything coming out of that. So I guess it's just a preemptive barracks to try and battle potential knights or horsemen. Longbows are coming out here. And once again, it's just a very old school build from both. I wonder if they're really just playing these old school build orders or there is some trickery coming in. But is Vortex... Okay, Vortex is just hiding his units. Seems like Vortex is aware that Marine Lord isn't going for the hunts, or he thinks that the opponent is there and he just doesn't care. Yeah, I, I think it's quite an interesting... <sighs> It's an interesting situation. Now, he's going to spot out the scouts from his enemy here. That will probably trigger off his alert. Uh, typically, you wouldn't see more than three scouts coming out of a Rus player. Normally, one out of the town center, one out of the uh, hunting cabin. Uh, but four should trigger him and be like, okay, that's a professional scouts opening. Um, and then that'll tell him that he's probably not going for the boars. But at the same time, the positioning of the boars, you can see that normally the boars would be in the middle of the map. Uh, and that is where it would be a bit safer. Uh, for our uh, our Rus player, but obviously it's not going to be the case. They are obviously they, they are in the middle of the map. It's just they're on the outside edges rather than the dead center. Indeed, looks like a second archer range is being dropped here by Marine Lord. Slowly but surely, Vortex is increasing his archer numbers, and he's got that first tower up. That's going to be a great staging ground to build further up on, and he's getting close to those carcasses, trying to intercept those uh, scouts that are coming in for those first horsemen out already. No attack or defense upgrades for either of these players just yet, but the numbers aren't spectacular right now for Marine Lord. Nine army is his count, but that's very deceiving because the scouts are actually counted as military. So in reality, that's one horseman and just four archers as compared to eight longbows and the spearman numbers are also increasing for Vortex. And I think he's going to try to tower the back of that wood line for Marine Lord. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, one of the things to note as well is that I feel like in this position, Marine Lord could probably keep making scouts just because there's going to be so many outposts coming through from our English player that they're kind of used as a pseudo siege uh, engine in a way because they're just, they, they, they are quick mobile, but they do a plenty of siege damage and uh, quite cheap little units to add in as well. So it makes a lot of sense to get them out just to do that extra damage. But uh, we start to see that horseman mass really starting to build. Not going to be going for knights here, it seems. Just going to be sticking with the good old-fashioned horseman composition. But going up against the archers of his enemy, they're going to be dishing out extra damage. One of the concerns for Marine Lord could possibly be the fact... Uh, look, look, did you see that farm shape? It's the exact same thing mm. that we had yesterday. Uh, on in case you've, yep. Yeah, and no, no, don't no worry, one could I saw explain it. it. No one could explain I, why the farms are looking like this. And I talked about this for probably about 27 minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we did a podcast episode on it. No, I, I, I've got no idea. I have got no, no idea what no the idea. thinking is. Yeah, I mean, Absolutely it gets right. they're, they're, they're a little bit closer to the town center, uh, but you're still only fitting in like, he, he fits in one, two, three, four, and I think he denies himself off like two potential farms that he can put down as well. Uh, but yeah, very curious decision making. I'd love to talk to him about it and find out a bit more about what it is all about, but beautiful wall timing coming through. I think that's still open though, isn't it, Lidacore? Uh, I think that's still open. I don't think it is. I think there is just a tiny bit of HP on that wall, just enough to keep those guys outside. And now we could be seeing a critical battle unfold very soon. The tower is up and that's the concern right now for Marine Lord. He doesn't really want to take fights close to those towers with the network of castles bonus being in effect. But if you look at the wood line distribution, you see that most of the wood lines that are close to Marine Lord's base are on the left side. So he would have to move quite far away to the right for him to access wood and now Vortex has depleted his sheep, so he's going to have to start adding farms in larger quantities. Yeah, very curious. Um, now, it looks like Vortex not going to be emulating the exact same placement of yesterday. Uh, can we take a look at those farms? I just want to see. He manages to fit a farm in between the town center and the and the mill, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he does. Okay, so yesterday he had misplaced his farms. Today, it doesn't seem that he's misplaced them at all. It makes a, a lot more sense here. Um, so... 
you can see that he manages to actually uh, make his farms. So he gets the farms a little bit closer, a little bit cozier with that town center. That's the only oh, real chop difference through. there. There is a chop through here with the villager. And now he what? is through. Oh, oh, oh wow. Wait. Yeah, he's oh, through. Oh, oh, uh. Uh, squeeze, mm. squeeze, push. <laughs> How did the, oh, the villager, the villager was the only one who got through? <laughs> Everyone else was stuck out on the other side. I mean, those bows are big, or the bellies of the longbowmen are big, or something, but they couldn't squeeze themselves through there. But the villager did chop through. Looks like a counterattack is being assembled here by Marine Lord, and you see he's already readjusting his lumberjacks to the forest on the north, so he knows what's coming. But this is exactly the danger of that uh, English tower build. For some time, you can just fall back to alternative resources, say, okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But once you have like eight towers or nine surrounding your base, suddenly it's no longer fine. Yeah, that, that is correct. Um, now, one thing to note, we don't actually have double broad axe coming through from Marine Lord. So he's just sticking with the standard wood upgrade, or rather the standard wood um, build order that the uh, the Rus have got access to, obviously dropping that wooden fortress down on top of that lumber camp. Going to help it out a huge amount, giving an extra 20% on top of what the base is going to be. And with that wheelbarrow there, it takes it from 15 up to 18. So he's getting an extra three wood for every drop off there. Uh, so there's going to be no shortage of wood in this game for him. Obviously, he's had troubles in the past with his uh, th his wood sufficiency. Look at these farms. Hold on. Can we analyze these farms for a second? What, what's going on? I, I, I need to see this. I need to, I need to study the way of the farm. The way of the... Okay, so he's got... Four, two, okay. and then four more. So ten. But I'm starting where does he to get it? Like, if you look at the two farms that are close to the town center, on like the bottom and the top part of the town center, those villagers are starting to gather from the farm from the um, side that's closer to the town center. So the way that the villagers work is yes. that they don't chop down all of those crops. They actually only go for like half of it. And yes. by placing your farm like this, you're actually chopping those sides that are a little closer to the town center. I think the difference is probably, like, I can't even imagine, maybe like five foot per minute or something. I don't think it's a massive difference, but it's such a small detail. Yet, as you see, Vortex is like, okay, every single detail counts, and he's doing that. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, I, I love the way that he's thought about that. So I'm assuming that yesterday's was a mistake. He went one tile too close, but now going to be pushing out. And i got to say, Marine Lord's military mass is superior, uh, significantly superior to his opponents. We see 39 archers coming out for Marine Lord at this point, compared to 21, 22 now longbows coming out for our English player. So he's been focusing a lot on farms, not focusing a lot on longbows, it seems. Uh, ideally, honestly, at this point, I'd love to see some walls up. Just put a wall up between these two outposts. Give yourself a bit of a barrier because the issue that you're going to have is if your enemy does look to commit to you, they will kill you. They will oh, completely boar. overwhelm you. Um, Marine Lord ultimately moved out for the boar, so while it was delayed, he does have that. And that's the thing. Vortex has to invest into the farms, whereas on the other side, you do have 450 bounty for Marine Lord that is tier 2, almost uh, tier 3, and he's getting that food getter boost alongside the fact that he's consuming that boar. So that's the reason why Marine Lord is able to afford so much. And as you said, there is something that Vortex needs to do here to prevent being overrun by the archer bull. And now we see the battering ram coming down. And even if he was thinking about, oh my lord, it looks like we've got mutual battering rams coming down. This is something that is saved typically for very rare occasions. But it seems like both players are going to be sending battering rams in towards each other's bases. A sign of affection considered by many to be a little bit too taboo for the 21st century. But it seems like it is going to be resurfacing here. Villager gets taken down. A very, very, very uh, optimistic uh, outpost that one is. Indeed it is, and now it's going to be denied. The ram also went down here for Vortex. He's got a second one. Spearmen are now being pulled to take down the ram. But Marine Lord has so many archers that he can commit even when the tower is firing at him. He can commit to take down the spearmen for the sake of saving the ram, and now the cavalry is coming in from the other side. Spearmen were detached from that longbow mass, and the cavalry is able to pick up quite a lot of kills here. Yeah, there's so much cavalry here as well. And you can see that even though the mass of uh, longbows is beginning to dwindle and the spears are here to defend it, there's just so many archers out from Marine Lord at this point in time. I don't see how Vortex is possibly going to be able to hold this. And you can see he's trying to run away. He's trying to escape. But as I mentioned earlier in this game, if you are ever out of position, if you are ever, uh, you know, not in the, in the right spot, you're just going to get punished. And that's exactly what happens. And now we have a completely overwhelming amount of units here. It is almost impossible for Vortex to win from here. I don't know how he's going to do it. He is down 43 population.
And there's also six villagers advantage for Marine Lord, something we haven't talked about yet. So six villagers advantage, you got the boar under your control, and now that ball of archers starts rolling, and the problem is that Vortex has nothing to stop them. He just now started adding longbows himself, but the numbers are just so much better right now for Marine Lord. He's got the defense upgrade as well, an upgrade that's still being researched right now by Vortex. And now all those fancy farms, no matter how efficient they are, if there are no villagers working on them, they are not worth anything. Yeah, such a great point. And now we can see that the longbows that remain here are all going to get taken out by the few the few archers that do. And uh, the rest of the army has moved down towards the base of Vortex. He's going to begin to struggle. And good game gets called, ladies and gentlemen. We are moving on to game number five in this grand finals. We are going through to the final game. Holy potatoes. We talked about the, to a certain extent, questionable choice of Vortex going for the English here. And... I feel like it was a little ambitious to think that the uh, standard good old-fashioned longbow rush is something that he can catch Marine Lord off guard with, because we know how powerful the Rus is. This brand new Rus meta, this is like one week old at maximum, with the boars, with just a flood of archers, and then the English is exactly the civilization that's the most vulnerable for this one. Uh, curious civilization choice from Vortex over here. Whatever he had planned, it didn't work out. Now the question is, what civilizations does he have available to him? And the map, obviously, it's going to be Dry Arabia. One of the things that Beastie Cutie said when he was victorious over... I'm, I'm trying to remember who it was that he <laughs> beat in N4C. It was uh, it was Lidical. It was Lenok uh, that he beat uh, in N4C. He said, my plan wasn't necessarily to win every game. It was just to win. 